Hi NymFam, welcome back to FPL 5 Things. I hope that Game Week 8 treated you better than it treated me, but we go again. And with that, let's get Fergie in to discuss the big discussion points ahead of Game Week 9. Hey Fergie, what's occurring buddy? How's it going Name, Yeah, not bad. Another small red arrow, but team team is looking good, I think. Going into game week nine, so quite uh, quite excited for the game weeks coming forward with with the wild cards in the back pockets Absolutely. as well. So yeah. yeah, how about you? Very similar, very similar. So I'm excited to get into these discussion points this week to see if any of them help clear some stuff up for me. So let's get started with our game week nine captaincy options. So it seems to be a lot of the community are really tearing their hair about whether or not to go Lukaku or Salah. What's your thoughts on it? Well, it's just, it's just an absolute classic form versus fixtures. Lukaku yeah. haven't scored. Well, it seems like he haven't scored for months. And uh, <laughs> Salah is absolutely, you know, he's in incredible form, both, you know, in terms of the Premier League and Champions League. Scored, you know, another couple of goals away last night as well. Yeah, it looks so um, good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he's awesome. Uh, Lukaku home to Norwich. You probably couldn't ask for a better fixture on paper. No. And Salah rates United. United do tend to play these big games looking for nil-nil. So it's such it's, it's such a tough one. I, I was all set on Lukaku um, mm-hmm. just because, like I say, I just can't see anything but a comfortable Chelsea win at the weekend. Um, yeah. But uh, Tuchel's comments yesterday <laughs> about him potentially being a bit, you know, tired. So confusing. Um, overplayed. <laughs> like, tired, but do you mentally, really bench him? <laughs> like, exactly. Mentally fatigued and uh-huh. all this kind of stuff <laughs> is a bit, you know, is a bit, um, has has caused me to pause a bit. So obviously, you know, it'll be all eyes on whether Lukaku plays um, this evening and how he plays this evening. Obviously, you know, we're recording before um the Champions League game and yeah. and you know and on the presses. I'm trying to think like how I, I try and think about decisions when I'm 50-50 always mm-hmm. is how I'm going to feel afterwards. Okay. And uh my current thinking is like all being equal, if nothing's changed by Friday, I think I'll put it on Lukaku. And my kind of reasoning is Lukaku should score a lot of points against Norwich or he should score some points against Norwich. And if we try and overthink it and put it on Salah and then Lukaku bags a brace or even a hat-trick, which, you know, is is reasonably likely, mm-hmm. um, and Salah blanks and a captain Salah just kind of overthought it, I will kick myself really, really point. hard. Whereas if the opposite happens, like Captain Lukaku, he doesn't do much and Salah does, I think I'll be a bit more kind of, you know, well, I still think it was the right choice. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, I know we talk about this every week and it's not for everyone, but ownership and effective ownership, looking at all the polls, Lukaku is the overwhelming captain so far as well. So if you do go for Salah and Lukaku holds and you're not on him, you could do serious rank damage. So that's where I'm currently thinking, but obviously it'll be all eyes on the presses on Thursday and Friday. Where's yeah. where's your head at the moment when you're on captaincy? <laughs> All over the place. Yeah, <laughs> Literally, bet. I'm like, Lukaku one minute, Salah the next. Like, uh, and then seeing Salah last night was like, ooh, so tempted to move it back again. But um, I think if you've got Lukaku in, you've got him in for these fixtures. So if you're kind of not going to captain him, when are you really going to captain him? So I'm on Lukaku at the moment and... I don't really see that changing unless tonight's fixture throws something up or, as you say, something in the presses comes out that, you know, he may not start or or whatever. But it's nice to know that we can move it to Salah if we want to, you know, not not that we're kind of sat there going, I wouldn't know where else to put it. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I quite like the fact that potentially the whole situation has put some people off of Lukaku. In a weird way, my kind of batches or brain is like, if a few people less, Captain Lukaku, and then he bangs this week, then happy days. You exactly. know? <laughs> but um, they're kind of the overwhelming out there picks. Who would be your maverick pick this week for captaincy if you have to choose one? God, it's a really good pick. It's, um, I do fancy um, Antonio against Spurs. Um, in mm-hmm. terms of like the high owned players, Spurs defensively have you know have just not been at the races. And you know, and West Ham historically against Spurs do tend to score a few goals. West Ham are at home, 
it's going to be absolutely jumping at the stadium yeah um because west ham hates spurs um <laughs> and you know like i say antonio he hasn't returned in his last two but i do think the tattoo you know obviously lukaku and salah the completely outstanding captains but i do think if you look at something different i do expect I expect West Ham to give Spurs a really good game on the weekends. Mm. I expect a reasonably high scoring game. I don't, I'm not sure West Ham will win. It could be like, you know, a two all or maybe a two one or, you know, or a three two or something like that. But I do expect Antonio to return. So he would be my pick. And if you're looking for just, you know, a complete one week punt, then you can't, you, you know, you probably can't go wrong with looking at a Palace player at home to Newcastle because they are mm. just absolutely. Awful. So you know, yeah. Edward has looked really, really sharp. Penteke. <laughs> and I'm not sure. Did you, did you all say Captain Penteke? But oh, um, imagine you know, they, they just look awful. Obviously, Steve Bruce has been sacked this morning, so you may get some kind of reaction. But they're just all over the place, and and yeah. Palace are decent moving forward. But um, I think Antonio would be my maverick pick. Have you got your eye on anyone? Yeah, so if I owned him and I was really thinking about a Maverick pick this week, I would actually go with Jimenez based on how well, leaky that Leeds defence yeah, can be. Sure. He only got a few minutes last game week due to his successful international break, but before that one goal and two assists. And looking a little bit back to his best again, so I think if I was going to have a bit of a shout this week on a Maverick pick, then it would probably be on uh, Raul. <laughs> Not a bad shout, that actually. Yeah, I was I was going to mention Vardy away to mm. Brentford, but um, Brentford statistically have got the uh, second best defense in the yes. Premier League this season, which is absolutely incredible. And so how many of us actually have any of their defenders? Not Great. many. <laughs> well, he they they're definitely something I'm looking at over the coming weeks because their running increases massively and they're incredibly cheap as well. So yeah. All right, then, well, let's move on to discussion point number two. And what's your thoughts on if you had Ronaldo and you wanted to move off of him for the harder fixtures, would you go to Vardy or Lukaku this game week? The the big question. <laughs> I'm again, not making them easy this week. No, absolutely not. <laughs> they, it, uh, you know, again, it's, it's completely classic form versus fixtures, but I just can't, I can't, I can't look past Chelsea's fixtures. So the next three, home to Norwich, away to Newcastle, home to Burnley. And Burnley, when they're away against the big teams, just tend to fall like a pack of cards. Yeah. So I just cannot look past these next three fish. Which I think they're just absolutely fantastic. And I think that, you know, it doesn't really matter if Lukaku is in form or not. He's going to get plenty of chances to score in these games. I think he's been a bit, he's been a bit unfortunate as well. You know, he's he's hit the post, he's had goals without for offside. You know, it's it's not like he's just nowhere to be seen. He's not like, you know, Kane of last season, for example, where he was just anonymous. <laughs> he 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 still is up there, he's in the box, um, he's still a menace. I just I just can't look past him. Um, I really like Vardy, obviously. Um but but it's just it's just the 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 quality of fit and the quality of strike that Lukaku is. What I tend to find with you know um, real premium high quality teams and players actually is when it comes to form, you only have to normally flick a switch a little bit and they just change. Like if Lukaku plays against Malmo this evening and scores a couple of goals, everyone will be back on Lukaku. You know, even though he's a played, it does that mean he's a, you know he's rich for the weekend? But mm. we're quite fickle in the way we look at football. And um, I just think, I say, the quality of fixes, the quality of the striker, the quality of the teams, I just can't pass Lukaku. Are you tempted by Vardy at all? I am such a form person yeah, when it they, comes they, to FPL. kind of opposite like that, aren't we? Yeah. yeah um, and so in previous seasons, if I was sat there now making the decision, I think I would probably go Vardy. I mean, top point score on 56 points, seven goals and one assist. Like, 18.5% owned. So if he does something, you know, mm. it's happy days for you in terms of being a bit differential compared to some of the other strikers, that is. So I think if I was kind of laying them both out at the moment, then I would probably be more tempted by Vardy, especially because mm. he's almost a million less as well yeah, than Lukaku. So it kind of could help you out somewhere else. But I am completely where you are at with Lukaku I think there's a lot of dramatics around him at the moment oh he's not doing well he's not doing well and I think 
early days, the the kind of I think I said this earlier on in my Monday stream with David Monday, we we were basically saying that the instructions were just get it to Lukaku, get it to Lukaku, get it to Lukaku. And that was really paying off. But since the game weeks have gone on, you know, Tuchel's gone more tactical with it. He's playing different players in different positions. And that's kind of lost the instructions of just get the ball to Lukaku so that he can, you know, yeah. so that he can score it a little bit. So I think if they can get back to that, then, you know, perfect. That He will, as you say, it's very much, I wouldn't move off of Lukaku if I had him. So I have him and I'm not yeah. thinking of switching to Vardy. It's whether or not I was thinking of maybe going from Ronaldo to somebody I would potentially be more tempted by Vardy just because of his consistency at the moment. However, yeah, I just, I can't. I think we'll be quite unlucky to go through these next few fixtures and not get something from Lukaku. And and you can have to travesty. Yeah, <laughs> it would because you you couldn't ask for better three fixtures. I think this is why I'm kind of excited about it is because you know one of the best strikers in the world is probably fair to say one of the best teams in the world um, against three of the worst teams in the Premier League and be- I mean, worst fans in the Premier League. It's 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 all aligned, and I think yeah. if we veer away from it. Again, it's that kind of kick yourself at the backside moment. Why did I not go for Lukaku against yeah. these players? But again, it's, it's it's personal preference. Evan plays the game differently, and that you know it's it's great to see both sides of the argument. Absolutely, and and on the the kind of basic point of FPL, as you say, Lukaku would be so highly owned that you know if he does do something and that and Vardy does, and that could be quite damaging. So in in the respect of weighing them up, I'd probably go Lukaku for safety. But if you fancy a bit of being a bit maverick or a bit batches, or then you know, which seems weird to say when Valdi's being so consistent. But in terms of his ownership, that would be the kind of more maverick yeah. move. Great stuff. Moving on to our third discussion point, and as always, it's who is our player that if we own this week, we'd ship them out, get them out of there. So who are you chucking in the bin this week, Fergie? Well, we chucked out Shaw last week, and <laughs> um, and I think just you know, and obviously Thank rightly God. so, rightly so. United <laughs> can't defend for Toffee at the moment, as we say, Captain Lukaku ahead of Salah this week. But I think this week it's time for Ronaldo. If you still, you know, if you still hold on to his ownership, is still high. But any United players, really, you know, Greenwood obviously returned last week, and I've got oh. no doubt, you know, oh. that, that <laughs> Ronaldo will 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 score a couple of goals, you know, in the next few weeks but there are just better options get that money moved over to Vardy Lukaku if you haven't got Salah for whatever reason if you're absolutely crazy um, obviously get Salah <laughs> well apparently Even... there are some people who don't because he's uh, the most transferred in midfielder this week <laughs> <That's right. laughs> even even Mane is not a bad shot with their fixtures mm. still he you know he's he's at, in terms of expected points he's um He's really up there. He's like second or third this season. And ter- even in terms of now actual FPL points, he's slowly climbing as well. Mm. Um, the, you know, Ronaldo just isn't worth it. Uh, with the way the fixtures fall now for the next few weeks, you're not going to captain him. They've, they're, um, they've got uh, Liverpool, Spurs, Man City, Watford and Chelsea in the next few games. You're not going to captain him. For 12.5 million, you want someone going to captain. Mm. Even Kane, you know, looks, looks to be reasonably back in form, um, you know, with Son there beside him. So, Put Ronaldo in the bin for the time being. Um, <laughs> wow. How about you and him? Anyone else? Or? Uh, just trying to decide what to do with Jota, really. I think he's quite a popular move out this uh, yes. this game week after his benching last game week. And then came on last night, won a penalty, but also almost gave a penalty <laughs> yeah. away in a couple of minutes. So not really sure what to do with him. Do you still have Jota, Fergie? I do have him. I'm thinking of benching him this week against okay. United. I, I think the thing with Jota, which is kind of if my, you know, if, if the rest of my team is in decent shape, which mm-hmm. it is at the moment, I don't mind benching Jota because you normally get kind of hints at times at when he's going to play and when he does play, when we know he's going to play, he's obviously fantastic. And if any of Salamane or Firmino, you know, if there's any hint of any injury or fatigue or whatever else. Um, everyone will be scrambling to bring him in, whereas you've already got him sat on your bench. So he is quite expensive to have sat on your bench. Mm. But I also think with the you know incredible value players we've got, you know, this season in terms of players like 
Livermento and Rafinha, potentially players like Tony, Antonio, who should all be priced higher, can maybe afford to hold him on the bench. So I haven't made a decision. I'm, I'm not getting rid of him this week, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, don't, I, I quite like the thought of holding on to him. But um, a jotter to maybe Foden or Grealish move next week or the week after could be tempting too. So just see how it plays out, you know, over the next week or two. Mm-hmm. Um, but if any of those front three get injured, he's just a shoe in absolute yeah. shoe in because their fixtures just go on and on as well. Mm-hmm. The only other one that's been causing me some hurt over the weekend is Ben Rama <laughs> because that guy, I mean, I think I've said it almost the last three game weeks we've done this pod now and <laughs> literally I'm just like, oh, I just, he looks so good every week and then he delivers next to nothing. <laughs> he does, he does. So he is a hard hold at the moment, I have to say. And I feel like I'm just waiting for him to explode one week and it'll probably be the one week that I decide to bench him. <laughs> yeah, maybe even this week. I mean, again, um, they're, they're playing Spurs this week and Spurs have been awful at the back. They're absolutely all over the place. Like, like I said, I, I do expect West Ham to score a couple of goals this weekend. It could be this weekend, but you know, if he doesn't score this, I think they got Villa next and um, Villa's expected goals conceded is not the best either but after that they do want a bit of a run so you know if he doesn't score this weekend I don't see any harm in taking him out next mm-hmm. personally but I wouldn't be selling ahead of this week um, just because like, I, think, I think it's a pretty decent defensive fixture for West Ham yeah okay moving on to number four we've discussed who we get rid of but let's have a little discussion on who we'd get in ahead of game week nine so who is up there for you, Fergie? Oh, I'm very excited about, about this player. <laughs> All right. We've we've already mentioned uh, the Chelsea run of games. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think we've done right to kind of wait on the news to see whether this player is going to be the number one, is going to start, you know, start most games, maybe not all, but most games. But I'm very tempted to bring in Ben Chilwell this week. Um, you know, he started the last two now, obviously, he scored. He scored in both. He scored in one. I can't, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly. Two goals in two games. Yeah. Just can't. You know, he can't stop scoring. You know, like <laughs> I mentioned earlier with Lukaku, these next three fixtures are just absolutely insane. Norwich, Newcastle, and Burnley. You know, even if he doesn't play in all three, you know, you know, even if he only plays in two of them, there's high potential. You know, obviously for clean sheets, but there's also high potential for goals and assists as well. So, mm-hmm. I'm very, very tempted. To, I think he's got incredibly high upside over the next few games. And that's something I always look for in fantasy, are these little runs where you just think, you know, even if it doesn't work, it's not the end. Even if he doesn't play, it's not the end of the world. Because our benches are quite decent anyway. So if he doesn't play, you get, you know, Ben Rama or Jotter off the bench, which, you know, it's, you know, it's not like last year where we were scraping, I don't know, some someone off the bottom of our shoe to come on, to come off the bench. You know, there's really, really good players. And Shaw is also the kind of player that if he doesn't start, Alonso tends to play the 90. Whereas that's the opposite with Reese James as Billiquette. They tend to play kind of most of the game and then get subbed on, as we saw with James um, last week. So he's one. And the other team I'm, I'm quite excited in So I've, um, is Brentford. So I've got and where were my team bought him in last week, hit the post twice against Chelsea. So obviously oh, really good don't. signs there. I know. <laughs> um, but, you know, Tony, but it's also the Brentford defence in terms of... Mm. Um, uh, in terms of value for money this season so far, they are they are the highest. So um, Jansen, Pinnock, and and Ray, the keeper, actually the three highest um, players in terms of value. And they, mm-hmm. I think uh, almost four point six, four point seven million. Um, like I say, uh, they've they're the second best defence statistically this season, and they're about to embark on a really good run of fixtures too. Um, yeah. So yeah, Chilwell and Brentford for me are the ones I'm very excited about over the coming week or so. Yeah. How about you? Who's your eye on? Yeah, Chilwell as well, um, for exactly the same reasons. I just want to give a shout out, though, to the picks that we bought up last game week. You brought up Wilson and he managed to get himself a goal. <laughs> and I brought up Sonny, who actually oh, wow, did fantastic. quite well. So we both uh, <laughs> we both yeah. chose quite well there. And actually, you know, for the second week running, I don't mind Son as another shout, to be yeah, honest. That's a good shout you know, four goals and two assists this season. Probably more of a long term pick compared to some of the people you've just mentioned right. there. But right. you know, you know what you're getting for that long term pick when you uh, you know, when you go with Sunny and if you can't get to Kane, 
then you know you've got some captaincy options covered there in these next coming game weeks too because Spurs have some you know excellent fixtures coming up agree okay lastly moving on to our fifth and final discussion point is KDB worth consideration again, Fergie? What's your thoughts? So while he's still obviously a magnificent footballer, he's overcome all his injuries, etc. You know, I think that uh, Pepper's come out this week, you know, and, and said, he's, you know, he's getting back to his best. He hasn't managed yeah. to get there for a long time due to various things. Mm-hmm. I still don't think De Bruyne is the FPL asset he was when um, Aguero was in yes. the team and I oh, think I think oh. it was just oh. it was just incredible and the way that Sexy. City play now <laughs> it was they just don't play with that you know the, that that same sort of mm. system they had when he was such a demon De Bruyne and um it doesn't look like he's even on penalties anymore you know Mares looks mm. to be the number one penalty taker um he, he you know and he, he he kind of switches positions as well I think last season he was playing at number nine a fair bit, whereas now he seems to be kind of settled back in midfield. I just think for his price, you know, all all ones you mentioned earlier, right? You know, Mane, um, you know, even even Foden at, what is he now? He's um, 7.9 or 8 million Foden will probably provide, you know, he'll probably get at least as many points to bro, you know, as to bring over the next few, even Grealish. Um, Vard, you know, you just think of where you could spend that money. Cancelo, Chilwell, there's there's so many better ways I think to spend the money so mm. for me at the moment even though the fixtures look really good even though I'm sure you'll score a few goals I always try and look at value and I you know I just think that um there there is there are better ways to spread those funds around your team mm. is he someone who's um who's looking at bringing in the coming weeks I like him as a differential 3.1 percent owned at the moment and he is a nostalgic pick for me but I am on the same wavelength as you. For that price, when I'm looking at weighing up whether I could be having, you know, Salah in my team or even a Mane at the moment, you know, going that double Liverpool um, midfield or even Kane or Son. When I'm thinking about those options, they tempt me more than KDB at the moment. But the really good thing about having a wild card is in a couple of game weeks, hopefully when I'm, potentially looking to use that if KDB really is looking back to his best and he really is looking like the best city attacking asset to have that's nailed on then it's nice to know that I can get to him if I want to Uh, but at the moment he's a bit of a wait and see for me I think yeah same 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 but you know I've I've got no doubt he'll score points and do well but but yeah I think I think these are the better value options Okay, that's it, you guys. That's our five things for Game Week 9. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We love to hear from you. You can also find a link to Fergie's Twitter page in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, then please do like, share and subscribe. So it's a goodbye from me for now and a goodbye from Fergie. Best luck all for Game Week 9. Hope you smash it as usual. Thanks for joining me, buddy. Nymphia times Fergie.